Today we're gonna analyze the source code of Silksong in a more technical way. We will compare the code to the previous game, see how things are coded and look at some optimization mechanisms. And before we begin, take in mind I am Nari C Sharp Pro and game development is one of my hobbies. Although I am a programmer, but I code mostly on languages like Python and Rust. So take it with a grain of salt. And with that being said, the very first thing I want to elaborate is how we are able to read the code of Silk Song. You guys asked about this in the comments so many times. As you know, this game is made with Unity Game Engine, and Unity games are written in C Sharp language. And C Sharp is notoriously easy to decompile back to its root form because it's usually stored as CIL, or the common intermediate language, which is not a machine code. And because of that, a lot of information is available in the compiled version version of the game. This information is stored as a metadata inside C# -sharp assemblies. What that means is that while comments are lost, you can still basically convert it back to its original C# -sharp code, preserving the original names for variables, functions, classes, etc. And that's basically how we read the code of Silk Song. To be even more technically correct, it's called reverse engineering. And now, with this explained, let's take a quick look at code quality improvements in Silk Song. Because let me tell you, those 7 years Team Cherry spent not only polishing the game itself, but the code as well. Take currency system as an example. In first Hollow Knight game, there was pretty much no currency manager class in the code. Adding Geo, taking Geo, like all the manipulations with Geo, all was done inside a single player data class. A huge file containing about 9000 lines of code. And while I'm not the one to judge their code, if you let me be nitpicky here, I would say it's a bad practice to combine multiple responsibilities inside a single class. Furthermore, it breaks the first rule of solid programming design principles. It's called SRP, Single Responsibility Principle. A class should be responsible for only one part of the software's functionality. However, things changed in Silk Song. Not only player data became much smaller, it's only about 4000 lines of code, which is half the size of the previous game, but what's more importantly, Silk Song now has a dedicated currency manager class, and that's way better way of writing code, if you ask me. Okay, so the save data code also have seen some love from Team Cherry, as it was kind of blotted in first Hollow Knight game. The save file as well as player data the class had like hundreds of separate values for things like charms, item equip states, hunter's journal entries, progress, etc. There was fields like got charm 1, equipped charm 1, and new charm 1 represented as boolean fields. And these three fields is pretty much repeated for all 40 charms in the game. In total for charms only there was 120 fields both inside player data class and inside save file. The same approach was applied for all journal entries as well. There was fields like killed acid flyer, kills acid flyer and new data acid flyer and they were pretty much responsible for tracking the progress. And if I remember correctly, uh, there are about 168 enemies in Hollow Knight and that's approximately 500 class fields and save data entries for each enemy available in the game. Once again, if you let me be nitpicky here, I think the dev could easily get rid of killed acid flyer bullion field that is used to track whether this enemy is killed at least once. Instead it would be a better way to check kills acid flyer integer field and if it's bigger than zero then that means at least one enemy was killed by the player. This way it would take like 336 fields instead of 504. However that's only my thoughts and maybe there is something more about it. But in Silk Song things changed once again. And instead of storing all those values as separate fields as it was in the previous game, Team Cherry decided to store those values as a dictionary. Both journal entries and charms tools are now stored the proper way, thus leading to a better overall code quality, with less lines of code and considerably good architecture. 
In previous code analysis videos, I've also mentioned a map markers. So, there is a function in both games called setup map markers. However, it's only the name where similarity ends, as the body of this function is completely different in both games. In Hollow Knight, it also introduces an unhandled exception right over here. And if you try to make a mod that changes the map marker's limit, this exception will be thrown and the map will be corrupted. Funny thing, the game will not crash, as Amelia Mesdek, if I pronounce that right, commented in one of my previous videos, Unity will catch unhandled exceptions that occur inside mono behavior methods, terminate the current mono behavior call stack, and continue execution of the next mono behavior or update phase. Now you know how it works. However, this function was completely changed in Silksong, and now it's a bit more concise and doesn't introduce the described issue with unhandled exception. And once again, Team Cherry heavily improved their code. But you know what's more interesting? The changes in the code affects not only the bugs and architectural decisions, and game mechanics was also modified in Silksong. Take a response system as an example. In Hollow Knight, it was pretty much a nightmare to work with, and I know that for sure, as I've made a mod that lets you respawn in the boss room after being defeated. Let me tell you, there was only two types of respawn in the code. Bench respawn and hazard respawn. As the name suggests, bench respawn is when the player goes 0 HP for whatever reason, thus being respawned near the last bench. And the hazard respawn is when the player touches spikes or something like that, the game then respawns him in the same room. So, if you wanted to make a mod to manipulate respawn logic in any way, in Hollow Knight you had to directly change respawn point in the code. And the issue is, it overrides save data. And because you're making a new spawn point each time, you end up corrupting the save file with non-existent spawn point. And you may say that Team Cherry didn't wrote the code with mods in mind, and yes, I agree with that, but you know what? They did it in Silksong, because Silksong introduces the third and new respawn type. It's called Temporary Respawn Point. And in order to set your custom spawn point, all you need to do is to set the value of this field. That's it. Literally zero pita with save data and all the kind of stuff that we had in previous game. It just works in Silksong, as easy as that. Okay, now let's talk about optimization. There are multiple places in the code I can think of. And the first one is related to scene transitions code. You won't believe it, but in Hollow Knight there was literally empty sleep calls in the scene transitions code. Yes, you heard it right, empty sleep calls that did absolutely nothing. Overall, the game was sleeping for about half a second each time a player moves to a new area for absolutely no f***ing reason. Once again, I know what I'm talking about as I made a mod to fix this issue. It removes those empty sleep calls in the code and makes the scene transitions way faster. And you can even compare it yourself. On the left, the game is with my faster load mod, and on the right, it's vanilla game. I mean, the difference is pretty much visible even with the naked eye. And as a Unity developer myself, I can't think of the reason why put empty sleep calls in the code. And when I say empty, I mean they don't do anything useful. I mean, you can pretty much comment out them and nothing will change. If anyone knows the reason, please comment below. However, in Silksong it was pretty much fixed. Like, there is a same function with the same name, but this time without unnecessary sleep calls. Not gonna lie, it reminds me of an old programming joke. If you ever want to surprise your users with a massive performance boost, just add an empty sleep call to the code and remove it later. <laughs> Ok, jokes aside, the game also introduces traditional optimization techniques such as an object pooling systems and memory pressure management, and even micro-optimizations for field access for a better performance. 
So there is a class named GC Artificial Memory Pressure. As far as I can tell, Team Cherry used it to artificially test the game under heavy memory usage. The reason is to observe how the game behaves when system memory is limited. In short, by applying artificial pressure on the memory, developers can see whether the game doesn't crash, unused objects are properly garbage collected, that assets are unloaded correctly, etc. They also utilize a mechanism that makes physics objects in Unity engine go to sleep, as there are FSM action called wake all rigid bodies, that is used to wake up physics objects currently in the scene. And one more interesting thing I found in the code is related to shaders and overall in-game graphics quality settings. There are fields like shader optimization, shader quality, target frame rate and particle effects level. Some of them can be changed in game, but I didn't found a way to change shader quality. Judging by the code, an enum shader qualities is responsible for this, and it contains three options to choose from. What that means is you can probably optimize the game performance even more by changing some of those values with the mod, as they are not available in the menu as far as I can tell. And there is also hitboxes and collisions we can inspect, but that's for another video, as well as a deeper analysis analysis of Hornet's movement in the game, and I'll try to analyze it and hopefully make a dedicated video about it. But for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed analyzing the code from a technical side as I did. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like, as there are plenty of related videos coming soon. Also make sure to leave a comment if you have any question or you just want to share your opinion. I'll see you in the next videos, and as always, have a great day!